What is up, YouTube? Long time no see. I know I've been out for a little bit. There was a lot of snow for about three weeks in a row. We had a little over three feet cumulative somewhere around there. And then after that, I was snowboarding and doing some different stuff like that. You know, just I wasn't getting out to skate at all. I did injure myself snowboarding one of the last times that I went out. I was coming down to the bottom of a hill and I was going very slow. I was just going on my heel side, just kind of slow, slow, slow. Got to the very, very bottom of the, the hill and tipped a little bit forward, caught my front edge and just went straight forward, uh, very unexpectedly right into the ground with my chest. I hit my right shoulder. Nothing really hurt at the time, but I got up, finished my run, got down to the bottom of the hill, caught up with my friends and we were getting on the lift and I was just like, Ah, oh, something is, uh, something got tweaked. And that was my very first run of that day, which kind of sucked because we were there for like another three or four hours. I had to take it very, very easy because I was super tender and it was, I was in, it was in some pain. I went and got it checked out. I got some x-rays. There was nothing broken. I was kind of scared that maybe, you know, I had torn something or like a ligament or something like that. They said that it was a possible AC separation, which is the ligament that connects your shoulder to the scapula. But then I got a call back later that day from, um, the person who is the expert uh, there for looking over the x-rays they said they didn't see any kind of tears or ligament stuff I've still been sore for about a week or two afterwards it's still been kind of like eh. I've got some like muscle like it kind of extends down through my bicep it's like a little piece up here gets a little bit sore and then like through my bicep gets sore so I'm having trouble like not lifting my arm there like lifting my arm with any kind of like super amount of weight doing any of this kind of stuff so I'm still healing I'm gonna try and get out for a skateboard session right after I do this unboxing but I just want to let you know if my skate session seems a little tentative it's because I am still nursing a, a wound over here that is gonna probably take a little while to heal I took a pretty good slam and while I don't think I I didn't break anything or tear anything necessarily. I think I did some some kind of significant thing to my shoulder muscle region that um, is taking its time healing. Anyway, I got a box from the good people at Akosa. I think that's how you say it, A-K-A-S-O. This is a action camera that they sent along, so let's open this thing up and check it out. Okay, this is the Akosa B50 Pro Endless Summer Action Camera. This is their special edition. This is supposed to have 4K at 30 frames per second. It has a touch screen, a waterproof case, distortion calibration. It supports an external mic if you want. It does slow motion, has an adjustable view angle, and a wireless remote control. Little quick start guide. All right, I can see the little remote. Got plenty of adhesive clips to put the camera onto helmets or boards. Attachments, cords, more attachments. Little wrench, bike handle attachment, basic housing. Okay, we got battery charger. Got another attachment, probably for the top of a helmet. Some straps. Adhesive pads, plus a little cleaning pad for the screen, these straps to make sure that even if the some clip comes loose, I guess you're still attached and you don't lose the camera completely. Nice. Two different batteries. And this little charger here. Looks like we can charge both of them at the same time by plugging into the wall. That's pretty sweet having two different batteries. You got yourself a backup. Got some more posts here. Man, this is chocked. Full. This is the waterproof housing right here. I think this is a backup uh, backing for the waterproof housing here. There's a lot of stuff in here. This is a cool compact little guy here. Small, lightweight. I'm hoping the batteries that came with it are somewhat charged so that I can get a little bit of the skate session that I'm about to go do. Let's go see what this thing can do. Okay, so I am now filming on the camera that we just unboxed and I am in Montclair, New Jersey at Rand Park. I've never been over here. We're going to check this out. It looks like I have the space pretty much to myself. I'll try and try out some of the different features for this camera. Right now I'm filming in 4K, 30 frames per second. I'll try and do some of the slow motion stuff as well. I don't know that I'm going to do underwater. I'm not going to skate underwater today. So, anyway, let's shut up. Let's warm up. Let's skate.
I will say I do wish that there was some kind of light on the front of this to let you know when it's filming or when it's not filming. That isn't present. So I'm not a big deal, but it is helpful when you're doing these kinds of things just to be like, oh wait, did I turn that on or not? Eh. Oh my God, guys. I just realized something. And I was thinking it while I was trying to ollie on those last wheelie attempts. Why am I not getting a lot of pop? Here's the reason why. That's my cruiser deck. Now it's still a popsicle deck. Still got regular trucks, but it has super soft wheels on it. I mean, not super soft, but they're like Richter Cloud type wheels. OJ Filmer wheels, excuse me. And I take that thing all the time around my neighborhood to go out and grab some last minute groceries at a little shop nearby. Just like I used to do in Brooklyn, I found ways to go out and take little trips just to get out of my board during the day so that I'm not in the house all the time, even when I'm not able to get out for like a skate session. Only problem is that deck doesn't have a lot of pop because I use it all the time year round. Sometimes it's, you know, wet out. This sucks. I'm so used to grabbing that deck. I grabbed it when I left the house and I'm like 20 minutes away from the home. Uh, I'll see if I can't pull off a 50-50 on this box, but oh man, I'm a numbskull. to take it easy because this arm is still not a hundred percent. Well man, welcome back and with the cruiser board no less. This space is pretty cool. I mean, just an abandoned tennis court that they've put a bunch of built-in ramps and boxes in here and little elements, flat bars and round bars and stuff like that. I think I'm gonna head back to the house, grab my deck, maybe hit a different spot. Six hours later. Okay, so I went home, got my regular setup, and I decided to come back to this park because I figured Maplewood would be mobbed or West Orange would also be mobbed. And while there's a couple people here, it's still relatively empty. And I like the fact that you can move the elements around. Part of the messed up thing about injuring my right arm, the thing I noticed, the muscles that were affected when I slammed snowboarding are like the startle reflex, the impulse to like put my arm out. So now I feel like, like with that slam that I just took a moment ago, I don't really feel like I can put my right arm out. It doesn't have the same response time. So I think I'm only gonna end up hurting this shoulder and this muscle a lot more. So it feels a little sketchy because I can't put my dominant hand down or maneuver as easily. It, I, I get a, an instant pain response whenever I do like a startle reflex. Excuses, I know.
feels different to have sunscreen on and to be sweating because my skin is covered in SPF. Okay, so I've had an ongoing game of skate with Shane for quite a while now. I have been out of it for like two months. I feel super bad for not getting back to him with this trick. I need to land a backside 50-50 stall on like a curb. There's something equivalent here that I'm going to try, but I'm not very hopeful considering that my backside 180s don't get that far off the ground. Let's give it a shot. I forgot what practicing in full sun feels like. Also forgot that I sweat this much. All right, water break, and then I'm gonna take this to a similar obstacle that has a little more weight to it. I think part of this is, this thing keeps flipping over on me because it's so small but I like the height of it. But I think that there's some other elements back over there where I was working that I can use that are similar. It's a mental block right now. I can do it over there, but as soon as you put some other stuff behind this little curb, all of a sudden I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna slide out or slip out. I don't, I can't run off the board in the same way. Just gotta pop and commit. All right, back to the other side, different angle. You guys see this death screw, right? Maybe you don't, I don't know. Death screw. All right, Shane, my battery is almost dead. I have a feeling I gotta go pick my son up from his school pod. I'm so close. I don't know if working on an obstacle with metal on it is not helping me with the slide or whatever. I mean, ultimately it's user error, but I feel like I'm very close. I can almost get it. This is E, which means I believe our game of skate is done. I'm not 100% sure. You're going to have to qualify that for me. I think my session is done at least for the day. I'm going to give probably some more specs about this camera back at my house and uh, 
we'll sign off then. Okay guys, now that we're back at the homestead, let's talk about this camera that was sent to me by Akosa. It would probably be most comparable to a GoPro Hero 8 since they're both 4K cameras. Some of the things that I really love about this camera is its size. It is smaller than a GoPro. It's also lighter weight than a GoPro. In addition, it also has a port on the side for you to do a wired microphone so that you can do an external microphone directly in and use that. In addition, because it has Wi-Fi, you can probably do a Bluetooth microphone and headset as well for this. It has touch screens just like the GoPro Hero 8. It makes this uh, back viewfinder screen easy for framing up your shots and checking out what you want to actually shoot. I also love this special edition. comes with two batteries as well as this charger that can charge both of them at the same time. That's pretty clutch. The session you just saw me do, I think I filmed mostly on one battery and that was that coming right out of the box. So I don't even know how charged that was. The number of accessories that comes with this package is insane. I mean, you guys saw that at the beginning of the video. There's so many sticker pads, mounts for your bike handle, helmets going on top of surfboards, the sticky pads, all those different things. There's a lot that you get for your buck. You also get the waterproof housing as well and then you also get this kind of very simple frame housing. All these things work with any kind of GoPro or most standard action camera mounts and setups. So you can kind of mix and match with things that you already have going on. The price point is pretty sweet. I'm gonna leave a link here above as well as down below in the description for both the Amazon link as well as the website for Ecoso so you guys can check out all their different products. On Amazon right now, this is listed at $109.99, which is a third of the price of a GoPro Hero 8. And considering that you can get four 4K quality with both, that's pretty insane, as well as all the accessories that come with this and the double batteries. In addition to that, Akos has been kind enough to send out a special coupon code. So if you guys want, you can check it out on Amazon and type in the code CAMVIP, CAMVIP, and you guys can get 15% off the already low price of around $110. That's pretty sweet. But as with everything, there are good and bad. And one of my main gripes about this camera specifically that I was not enjoying as much, and you guys could hear it in the video, the sound quality is not amazing. It's also not amazing on the GoPro Hero either, which I have and which is what I'm filming on right now. I've complained about this in past videos with the GoPro as well. Having a microphone on the top and the bottom, while might be good for action shots and things like that, it's not as great for talking directly into camera or doing any kind of vlogging stuff. That being said, you can do an external mic on this and probably resolve that by having a better quality microphone. My only other real gripe with this, and it's not that huge, but there is no lens cover on the front of this. Outside of using the waterproof housing that comes with it to kind of protect this lens, if you scratch this, you're kind of done. I don't think that this comes off or that there's a replacement one that you can put on. Those are my really, my only two gripes. I mean, at the price point of a, a third less than buying a GoPro, if you're looking for a very economical, you know, way into 4K filming for action cam type stuff, I would definitely check this out. Again, I'll leave a link below in the description as well as right here above that you guys can click on. Use the VIP code, CAMVIP, and you guys can get 15% off the already low price of $109.99. Guys, thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Have an awesome day.